Majestic Major, a model aircraft project, part 11. Making and fitting the downthrust wedges to the engine mounting plate and explaining why they are needed, then fitting the engine in place. This is a shot of the aluminium engine mounting plate that I made in a previous episode. And this is a small piece of aluminium square bar that I'm going to chop up to make the downthrust wedges. I'm going to use machine tools, but really you could get away with a hacksaw and a file on this job. First of all, I'm cutting two pieces of the aluminium bar to the same length. And I end up with a very small piece of aluminium, which will go in my very small pieces of aluminium box. Seriously, you never know when you're going to need very small pieces of metal. So within certain limits, I do save them and put them in my scrap box. I'm going to use the milling machine to profile these two pieces of metal into long wedges. And here I'm showing that I'm using a very large face cutter for this job. Before I start to shape them into wedges though, I need to reduce the thickness of them. My milling machine has never liked this face cutter and it makes a horrible noise. Most of it though is the actual guard on top of the milling machine rattling. But it still gets on my nerves after all these years. Note to self, why not buy a better milling machine? And the answer, I like to keep the crappy one because it's more indicative of the type of milling machine you would find in the model engineering workshop of a beginner. And for the sort of jobs I do, it does the trick, it actually does do the job. I suppose if I was a better engineer, I would buy better machine tools, but I'm quite happy with my three lathes. They're not perfect, but they really are quite good. You will notice that the pieces of aluminium bar are resting on pieces of mahogany in the machine vise. This is more than adequate to provide a level for this job. If I was making components for very high tolerance applications, I would use some accurately ground parts called parallels. But they are not required for this job, I just need the pieces of mahogany in there to lift the two pieces of bar at this stage so I can machine the taper. The question is, how much downthrust do I need? And what is downthrust and what's the point of it? The electric motor that was fitted to this model that I removed had a lot of downthrust, it really did look stupid. I'm not going to machine these two pieces of metal to the same steep angle to give that amount of downthrust. Although I'm going to make the downthrust angle quite steep, because if it's too steep, I just remove the engine, remove the wedges and machine them to a slightly shallower angle. Having said that, I think the angle that I'm machining at the moment should be okay. So, the question, why do you need downthrust in a model aeroplane? And the answer, you do not need downthrust in most model aircraft, but this type of vintage model aircraft with a high lift wing section profile needs the downthrust because as you increase the throttle, the aircraft will climb automatically. And then you have to feed in some down elevator to keep this under control. But by making the engine point downwards, with these wedges as you see here in this clip. The climbing when under power, or ballooning as it's called, is greatly lessened. This clip shows the principle very clearly. All I need to do now is drill some holes in the aluminium wedges. I'm using my deep hole marker to mark the positions on the wedges through the holes of the engine's mounting. Then I drilled the holes, and I also re-drilled the holes in the mounting plate to allow for the angle of the bolts going through. Originally I drilled the holes using a 4.1mm drill for 4mm bolts. But I re-drilled them 4.3mm just to give a bit of float on the bolts for the angle. I'm fitting washers and nylock type nuts underneath and I use the ratchet arm on the screwdriver to tighten them. In this shot from above you can clearly see the amount of right thrust that I have on the engine. As I've mentioned before, right thrust and down thrust are to counteract other forces that happen when the engine's running. Looking at the engine from the back, the propeller turns in a clockwise direction. I mentioned this in a previous episode, it's all to do with Newton's third law of motion. You don't need right thrust, but it is a good idea, it saves putting any trim in the rudder. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you this. This is a nipple that's fitted to the rear of the engine and vents the crankcase. It is not a pressure feed nipple for the tank. It allows for the excess oil in the engine to drain away. The time has come to mount the engine permanently into the airframe. 
I'm using four 2BA bolts. They're quite long and they're made from steel and they go into the wood that are threaded using a 2BA tap. When I was painting the engine bearers, I pushed some paint down into the holes and this helped to harden the threads. Normally I would use thin super glue, but I didn't have any, so I used paint instead. It works fine. And all four of the long 2BA bolts tightened up perfectly, and they are very tight. This engine mounting is going nowhere. And it's time to fit the propeller. I'm using a glass-filled nylon 12x6 propeller. This prop will be fine for this engine, and I'll have plenty of power to spare when I fly the aircraft. All this talk about side thrust and down thrust, in my case, is completely unnecessary. I've only put it in the video, well, because you need to know about these things if you're building model aircraft and you don't have a really fancy transmitter. I use an old Futaba 9 Zap transmitter, which allows you to mix just about everything with anything else. On my previous Majestic Major, I didn't have any side thrust or down thrust. And to prevent it from ballooning or turning left all the time, I just set up mixers from the throttle to both the rudder and the elevator. So, as I increased the throttle using the throttle stick, the elevator moved proportionately downwards, and the rudder moved to the right very slightly. I've only been rambling on about down thrust and side thrust, because some people are just not into computer transmitters, and it's easier doing it this way, it's built in all the time. That's it for this episode, not many more to go in this series. All I need to do now is fit the radio control system. Please try and stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.